every time there's a ray of sunshine, a cloud passes through, um, Euclid comes back, injury. Teixeira comes back, injury. Granderson comes back, injury. Jeter, one game, Joe? What's going on? I thought you were talking about the weather this last week. And that too. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's really unfortunate. It, it's hard to believe that we could get the guys back and they go right back on the deal. I think Tex and Uke basically lasted the longest um, of all the guys that we've had. But it, it's been unfortunate. Just been some freak things that have happened, and we've had to deal with it. Now you say freak things, and, and everybody's always looking for a reason for things. Right. So the day before Derek came up, the injury to Hafner, the injury to Gardner. And he gets a call at 11.30 at night. Why did you need him that next day? Well, we were going to DH him. It, he was going to DH in the minor leagues. Uh, he had been playing. He had done all his running. And, they, you know, we were told he was running well. And um, so when we got back, we just said, you know what, we may not have enough players. I mean, that's the bottom line. So we were going to call him up Friday to play Friday. So we said one day earlier. Uh, shouldn't be a problem. We'll DH him, and then we'll probably DH him Friday, and we'll go from there and, and probably give him Saturday off and play him Sunday in the field. But unfortunately, there's a ball hit, and it's hard to you know, predict exactly when you're going to have to give that little bit of extra, and it cost him a, a problem with his um, quad. In retrospect, do you think it was too soon to bring him up? Not even if it was Friday. Was it too soon to bring him up? Was Derek just too anxious to get here? No, I don't, I don't second guess what we did. I, I don't. Um, you know, we're trying to win games, and we're trying to get back in the division. Uh, that's the bottom line. So, yeah, you wait one day, he might have got hurt in AAA. He might have got hurt on Friday. Uh, that's the bottom line. So I, I don't think so. When Derek comes back, if he's available for Friday against the Red Sox, if he goes on the DL and comes back, do you have to manage him differently because he's 39 years old? Well, I've had to manage him different the last couple of years. So it, it won't be any different for me. Um, he's going to play short, and he's going to DH some, and we're going to have to keep him fresh and make sure his legs are under him every day. But it's something we've had to do the last couple of years around here. Now, one of the questions that I've been asked a lot, well, doesn't this devastate the team? And what I explain, and you could speak to it better than I can, and I don't mean this in a bad way, players are kind of selfish. They worry about themselves. I mean, they can't worry about Derek Jeter's hurt. I don't think they're happy that he's hurt, but I don't think it's going to set the team back. Am I right or wrong? No, I, I think you're right. And players want to play. So, you know, when a guy comes back, it usually takes playing time away from someone. So they, they decide, you know, you know, it's not something we can worry about. I can only control what I can do. I'm going to go play. Do you sense any kind of woe is me on your roster? No, I don't. I, I think these guys play hard every day, and they look for a chance to win a game every night. Alex Rodriguez, what's the update on him? Uh, he's playing. Um, you know, we're trying to get him back. I think his 20 days is up a, a week from Monday, uh, a week from tomorrow. So hopefully we'll get him back, and he'll be productive for us. And Granderson? Uh, there's not a whole lot going on there. I think he's just started to swing. Uh, unfortunately, this has probably taken a little bit longer than all of us want. But, you know, when you break your hand and you deal with surgery, you have to deal with some things. All right. Hafner and Gardner were hurt, but they both played since then, so there's no problems. There's no problem there. Uh, they will continue to play, and I don't see it being an issue. Anything with Cervelli? Uh, no. Uh, his two weeks is about up from his, his setback. I think it's... Tomorrow, his two weeks is up, and uh, he'll probably try to throw again. All right, let's talk about some of the games that happened this weekend. The Royals were in town, then the Twins over the weekend. Ivan Nova again was outstanding. I mean, it's, it's, it's been a different pitcher since he came off the DL. Not the DL, got called up from the minors. So what's different? Well, to me, it's his fastball doing this. When his fastball is flat in the zone, it's going to get hit. The hitters see it really well. When it has this, it has run to it, it has sink to it, and you see swings and misses. He's got a very, very good curveball that has been very consistent. And it seems like the second and third time through the lineup, he starts to use his changeup, and that helps as well. So to me, it's, it, it's not like he's got the corners with his fastball, but it's got that great movement and that downhill plane. All right. Now, to a layman, try to make me understand, why does it go down, and sometimes why doesn't it go down? Well, that, that's a mechanical thing probably for Larry Rothschild. I don't get into a lot of the mechanics, but a lot of times it's your front arm, and, and you got to pull it down, and if it goes to the side, the ball's going to stay up. All right. Andy Pettit has been one of your most reliable starters and for the Yankees since 95. But uh, he's had six straight starts where he's allowed four runs or more, and it looks like he's making mistakes that he didn't make before. Are you concerned about Andy? Yeah, when I look at his start, I believe it was on Thursday. We didn't play great defense behind him. I mean, I look at a start, he probably should have given up one run. We didn't make the plays on the bunt. Um, there were two drag bunts or push bunts that they got hits on, and those are plays that we need to make, and that changes the whole game for him. He gives up one earned run, and we'll sign up for that anytime. All right, now Hiroki Kuroda pitched so well against the Twins. Um, it was a rain-delayed game, an hour and 13 minutes, and the first thing I have to ask you, 
I, I was shocked when he yeah. came out for the fifth inning. What was behind that decision? Well, we kept him throwing underneath. He lobbied. He said he had done it many times in his career. And that's hard for me to know, um, just, and, I, and I took his word for it because I have not been around with him in, in Japan. I have not been around with him in L.A. But he really wanted to go back out. We kept him throwing. He threw like an inning under the bullpen, and Larry kept him going. So we figured, you know, we'll get one inning, maybe two. If we could do that, that'll be great. It wasn't just about getting him a win. You just No, thought, it wasn't. The we, team's more important than him getting a win. That's right. We felt that he would still be effective, and he would be okay.